Hey, so let's learn some chip design together and what I want to use is Verilog and what I want to use is the HTL Bits website problems to do that. So HTL Bits is this website, htlbits.01xz.net uh, and it has different problems that you can choose from. Uh, down here there's lots of problems you can choose from. Um, and what I want to do is to go through each problem one by one. So the way I want to structure uh, this is first I will present well, I'll present the problem, now I will present the background that you that I feel that you need in order to solve that problem. Then there will be a gap where you can pause the video and go away and try to solve that problem. Now, hopefully, I have done my job sufficiently well that you have the information from the background to then solve that problem. If not, no worries. Uh, I will, in the next bit, after the, after the gap, after the pause, then I will present one way of solving that problem. Or I might present a couple of ways, it depends if I know any other ways, or I might, anyway, I might, I'll, produce, I'll provide one or more ways of solving the problem. It may or may not be the like, official HDL bit solution. Uh, I might show that solution, having provided one way of solving it. Um, I might show several ways, which, one of which might be the official way. For chip design, there's two or three main languages that are used at the kind of like low level, hardware level. One is Verilog, one is VHDL. There's also System Verilog, but in my opinion, System Verilog is basically like a later version of Verilog. Like Verilog versioning stopped and System Verilog versioning started. So I just see System Verilog as a as later versions of Verilog. I'm going to be teaching uh, a sort of combination of Verilog and System Verilog. Basically, what I will be teaching is Verilog so is is Verilog plus bits of System Verilog that work and run in Icarus Verilog Simulator, in Verilator Simulator, and in Yosis Synthesizer, as well as in the uh, HTML bits website. I'm going to assume you have some background in programming. Like, I'm not going to assume like you're really advanced developer but i'm going to assume that you do know how to write a program and that you've written a program right now writing hardware design is different from writing a program i understand but that's where i'm going to start from if that's a bad assumption uh, then please put in the comments that i need to not assume that you have written some programs okay and so we're going to start with problem one which is step one called getting started uh, we can see, well, okay, let's read the book. Well, no, actually, just, just look at this code. So it's given us some code here, and uh, we're going to have to insert some code here and fix it. But, like, what is this module and this output and this end module? So let's start with talking about what this is. So uh, let's draw this here. So basically, a module is a, a little piece of hardware which has connections to other pieces of hardware. So let's draw that. So a module has connections to the to outside of that module, so the to other modules, for example. Um, and we call those connections ports. And you can have output ports, which is connections to other modules. And you can have input ports, which is connections from other modules. You can also have ports that are both input and output, but those are relatively rare. They're hard to manage. Most of the time, we're going to be using either input or output ports. All right, so these are ports, and these ones on this side are output ports. Okay, and on the other side, these ones are input ports. And we give them names. The names are arbitrary, just like variable names. We can give them any name we want. So. We could give this one, we could call this one A, we could call this one output one, we can call it anything we want. Like whatever makes sense to us and to the people who will be using our module, which could be just us, it could be people in our company, it could be people in other companies, it depends who's going to be using our module. So this one we might call it like enable, and this one we might call it like clock, for example. So these are inputs coming into our module, and these are outputs going out from our module. Now, these connections basically represent wires. Now, in the real world, a wire is kind of, it's symmetrical, like you can connect it either way, and a wire doesn't make, doesn't make any difference whether you connect the wire from A to B or from B to A, it's the same. But in, in Verilog, wires usually have direction. Uh, so you have like a driver side and a 
a source side and a sink side. So these wires all have connection, all have direction, right? So the input port is pointing into the module and the output port is pointing out of the module. And that kind of makes sense because if you've got something driving the value, of, so that the, the wires carry values, ones and zeros. A one is a high voltage and a zero is a low voltage. Like these are electrical signals. So the signal can be high, which is one, or it can be low, which is zero. So high means a high voltage and a low means low voltage. So, but you usually, you tend to have one thing driving the value of that wire. And then you have something else at the other end of that wire, which is looking at the value of that wire. So that value is kind of flowing along that wire from the source to the sink. All right, so here's our module. Uh, it should usually have a name. I mean, it should pretty much always have a name. So we could call this, I don't know, our first mo my first module, let's say. Uh, the name doesn't change anything physically. Uh, it's just used when we're writing our error log so that we can refer to different modules. All right, so we've got these wires coming in, in, and we've got wires going out, and then we can connect these together. All right, so I can connect, and again, these connections have direction. Uh, so we could connect this one to this one, for example. Or we can connect this one to this one. Or we could connect this one to this one. Right, we can connect these wires as we like. Yeah, so let's write some code to represent this module. To write the code for a module, we do module. Then the name of the module, which in this case is my first module. Then we have two curly brackets and a semicolon. And then we have end module. All right, so this is a module. Module, the name of the module, two, two round brackets, semicolon, and then end module, like this. All right, now in between these brackets, we then put the ports. So the ports have names. So here we have enable, and then we have a comma, and then clock, and then a comma, and then we have A, and then a comma, and output one and we don't with no comma at the end right just commas in between them it's illegal to put a comment after the final one all right so here we've defined our module with the name with the ports the names of the ports and here's the end module uh in this bit here we're going to put connections between like the wires here but let's not go there for it yet we also need to say which of these ports are inputs and which puts are outputs there's a couple of ways of doing that one is to put it down here like you can put say input enable says all right this port called enable is an input port um, we can do that for clock two for example clock and output a and uh, output output one i so this is like pure verilog i usually use the system verilog version which is that you can put the input here so you can put input enable input clock output a and output output one. All right, so we defined our module. Uh, we've said we've got four ports, two of them are input, we said which are input, two of them are output, we've said which are output, and then we've got the end module. Now in between here, we can now put our connections. All right, so if I want to connect A to clock, I use a sign. To make connections, we use a sign. And on the left-hand side, we have the, the sink, and on the right-hand side, we have the source. So here, a is the sink. This arrow is pointing from clock to A. So assign A equal clock. So this says that we take the value coming from clock and we connect that to A. So A is now connected to clock. Right. It's it's different from a it's different from an assignment in programming because in programming this assignment just happens once when we execute this statement, but in Verilog, this connection is permanent. Once we have said assign A equal clock, these are connected together and they stay together, connected together permanently. And any change in clock will immediately change the value of A without running the statement again, right? This is a permanent and continuous connection. Right, what else can we do? We can also assign values. So instead of connecting output one, to clock, I can um, I can connect it to ground, which is uh, 
zero volts, which is has a value of zero. Okay. Um, or I can connect it to uh, like power, like whatever voltage that is. Maybe it's like three volts or five volts or whatever, which has a value of one. All right. So let's say we kind of want to connect it to. Let's get rid of this one. Let's say we want to connect it to five volts one. We would say assign output one equal one. And if we want to connect it instead to zero, we can do assign output one equals zero. Now, there's a little bit of extra notation around this that's possible. I can't remember if we need that for this problem. Uh, I think that this is sufficient. Actually, what does it say in this? Yeah, uh, I think it should be fine. Actually, let's look at the hint. What does the hint say? Yeah. All right. So I think that this is sufficient information to solve this task. All right. So let's read the problem statement. The problem statement is uh, build a circuit with no inputs and one output. That output should always drive one. Okay. There we go. So that's the problem statement. And here's the frame. Here's the code that they give you. And basically, we've got assign one equal, and then you have to replace fix me with some code so that so one is an output, right? One is an output port. Our module is called top module. And we basically have to make sure that one, the output port one, has the value one. Um, all right, so at this point, I'm gonna don't know how to signal the pause, but I'll somehow signal the pause. Uh, maybe I have a slide uh, that says something like time to solve the task. Please pause the video, attempt to do the task, and then continue the video once you have sufficiently attempted to the task. Now, ideally, please try to solve the task before you carry on the video. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can just, if you get stuck and you get stuck for too long, then you can just continue the video before you've solved it. All right, so now time to solve the task. Uh, and I will see you after you've unpaused the video. Uh, all right, so now I'm assuming you unpaused the video. Or maybe you never paused it, I don't know. And here is our task, right? Uh, so, so our goal is to make sure that the output port called one has the value of one. And how do we, so and it gives you this module and it's got a sign one equal. So what do we put here? Well, we're simply gonna put one. All right, and let's do submit. We get a warning because we're just forcing it always to be one, which is not a normal thing. And um, yeah, we get state of success. All right, so we've succeeded. Um, so it's got show solution. Uh, okay, so they're doing a little bit more complicated notation. We will look at this notation later. You know what, since they're using it now, let's go over this notation now. So what does this notation mean? So let's take it over to Notation, and uh, we're just going to do for binary numbers for now. And uh, well, let's have this. Right, so they're using this notation, right? So what does this mean? So there's different parts to this. This bit on the left is the number of bits. Okay, so for example, if we had the binary number 1011, this is four bits, right? If we had 1011000, this is seven bits, right? Um, but what if we had the number one, okay? This is one bit, but you can also, you can also have the number one 
as four bits, right? So basically, this is how many bits. Okay, this you just always have to have this in between the number of bits and the type. The B says this is what we're writing in binary. So this means that this number is binary. B means the value on the right is binary. Okay, so that means that this number here is only zeros and ones because it's binary. And then finally, this is the value. Okay. Right now, you can also have other types, like you can have D for decimal, H for hexadecimal. Uh, in fact, I guess we can add that in here, right? We've also got D is for decimal, and H is for hexadecimal. Right now, in our problem, so this port is a single wire, a single bit, it's either one or zero. So we've only got one bit. Uh, representing it in binary, and the value is one. Right. So in this case, this and this means the same thing, but this is slightly more explicit about what we're doing. We're, we're using a single bit, we're using binary to represent it, and that has the value of one. So there we go. So there's the first task. Cool. All right. So I think I'm going to keep this as a single video. Um, if you liked this, please click like. If you've got any comments on what you want me to do better, differently, uh, things that you want me to cover or not cover, uh, what is your background knowledge? Like, are you comfortable with my assuming that you can program or not? Just let me know in the comments, please. And I hope that you like it, and I'll see you in the next video.